Hey guys, the purpose of this video is to just kind of walk you through some of the things that I talked about today um, when I showed the Screencast-O-Matic software. Um, I'm also going to show you how to splice two videos together in the Photos app that you should have on your computer. Um, because I can't show you the screen capture software while I'm using it, I have just um, screen, like print screened here what I would see before I started um, to record and I can show you kind of the options that you have here. If you are, so once you've gone to Screencast-O-Matic and um, clicked on launch free recorder here, and this is from the Screencast-O-Matic website, um, you eventually, once you've downloaded the software, and you shouldn't have to do this too many times, um, but it will it will pop up um, and you can go ahead and, and use it. You will see a dash line on your screen if you want it to cover a smaller amount of content or if you want it to cover a bigger amount of content, you can just drag these white bars or these um, corner pieces out to where you want them. Um, and then you can adjust the settings and that's really just gonna kind of depend on what you prefer. So if you only want the video that you're making to capture what you see on your screen and not use your webcam to also record your face, then you can select just screen here, and again, this would be before you started recording. Um, if you only want them to see your face, then you can just pick webcam, um, and then if you want both, and that's what you see now, is both, you see what's going on on my screen, and you also see my face down here, um, then you can select both. The max time if you're using the free version is 15 minutes, um, but again, I, I don't pay for the full version and I've found a way to kind of circumvent that um, forcing me to pay thing by just putting the videos together. Um, I don't change the size, I really don't know too much about this. Narration is just me talking. If you did have, usually once you push record, your settings box is going to go away, but if you wanted it to come back while you were recording, then you could select your little um, settings gear here, and you can see as you're talking the bar kind of jump back and forth, and that's just basically how loud you're being when you're talking. Um, it's also a good test before you click record to make sure that your microphone is working. I use this with the computer. Um, like the, the work computer that we were issued, I don't have any additional um, setup. I don't have an extra microphone. I don't have a like an outside webcam, so I think I'm good. Uh, I think you guys are good, although I have heard reports of people needing to kind of do something differently. Um, so I don't know if you have issues, probably ask IT about that. Um, you can also select your preferences. I don't really mess with that either. So but you might play around with it, I don't know. Um, once you start recording based on the settings that you've selected, you will then kind of see this information here. If you want to pause the video, you can. Once you pause the video, you'll have the opportunity to save it. That's when you would click done. You'll have the opportunity to trash it. So there's a little picture of a recycle wing bin or something like that, trash can. Um, you can start over if you want. The other thing that you can do while you're recording is move your face around. So if you're recording something and you don't like, you know, your face is covering the content, um, then you can just like drag it all around. Or if, um, I don't know, you've got to stand up and walk away, but you still want to keep talking, um, you can kind of toggle in between what your, um, the viewer is going to see. So the I'm not actually sure what these two are. One of them is the screen and one of them is just you. I'm thinking that the one that's filled in here is the is just you and then I think the open one is just the screen, but you might play around with that just to confirm. I, I only ever keep my options on um, both, so there is that. I think that's everything that I want to tell you about this software. Um, once you click done, it usually will prompt you 
to back to the website. You, I always save my file in a location where I'm going to be able to find it and I title it something that I would want to, um, to use. You know, maybe I want to title it like tutorial or something like that. Anyway, um, and that's the other thing about recording a video is sometimes I forget what I want to say and then I have to really think about it. So I'm all, oh, the other thing I want to show you is how to upload your video to YouTube and kind of play around with that some more than I showed today, just so that you can see all of the opportunities that you have with YouTube and the cool things that you can do. But I'll do that at the end of the video um, in case you don't want to watch all of this. So the next thing that I want to show you is what happens if you need to record more than 15 minutes worth of content and you don't want to upload separate videos to YouTube. I've done that before where I would have you know, lecture on APA format part one and then I would have lecture on APA format part two, um, but I think the carryover for a student to go in and watch the second um, video is a little bit low. So I found a way to still be able to get the free um, software and not have to pay extra for longer recording time um, by just using an app that you already should have on your computer. Um, I'm showing you right now my toolbar because when I capture um, my screen like through Screencast-O-Matic it's not, I don't, maybe it is capturing my toolbar, I don't know. Anyway, um, what you can do if you don't already have the icon uh, on your screen, whether that's on your desktop or in your toolbar or whatever, um, is go to, I think this is Cortania, um, the lady in your computer who helps you find things. Um, you can go to, it basically is a little circle, and if you can see this, I'll do it right now, um, and just then something pops up, but ignore that, and you'll notice there's a cursor um, with a search icon, and just type photos because what is going to pop up is the app that you need. And this is what it looks like when it pops up. Now, mine already has a whole bunch of videos that I have merged together, um, but yours yours might not. Yours might have a, a walkthrough tutorial or something like that. Um, and what you want to do is just click new video. Now this would be again after you have recorded all of the videos that you want to merge into one file so you can just upload one bigger video to YouTube. Um, and again that would be if you needed more than 15 minutes worth of content. So I click new video and then I go to new video project. There's probably a lot of really, really cool things that you can do with this software, but I don't know all of those. I just do the most basic thing possible. Um, you can name your video whatever would be most helpful. I'm going to say something like how to make a video. Click OK. Um, and the first thing that you want to do is add your different segments to your project. So click add. From this PC is probably where you're going to have to grab it from because you have likely saved it to a folder on your computer. If that's not the case, then you, you could pull it from somewhere else, but I'm guessing you're going to need from this PC. Here I have Screencast-O-Matic and I have Tutorial 1. Now it's here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drag it down to my storyboard, so I'm clicking and I'm dragging. Plop. And now I want to add from this PC, uh, really quick, notice the story is 5 minutes and 38 seconds. Okay, now I'm going to add tutorial 3 and pull it down. Now my video is 17 minutes and 55 seconds and you can see right here um, is where the video connects from one, uh, you know, original video to the next one. Um, and you can work through and preview it if you need to. If you feel like you want to edit it or trim it, you can. Again, you can do fancy stuff here within your video before you upload it to YouTube. Um, I just use YouTube for everything, so I don't play with these, but I mean, if you want to get fancy, apparently there are 3D effects. That sounds like a lot of work though, so it's not for me. Um, Finished video is where you want to go once you've confirmed that these are in the right order. If you realize that you've added them out of order, so let's say this 
segment is what you wanted to come first, then just switch them around. I mean, it's like it's like moving cards if you're playing a game. Um, then finish video. You can pick the quality that you want. I'm just going to go with high quality. And click export. It's probably going to take a minute. Um, find a place to save it. So, when I do this, it doesn't save to the same place that most of my Screencast-O-Matic videos save to. So you can either move it to a different folder or just keep, you know, keep an eye on the pathway that you're using. To make a video. And click export. Um, and now you're just going to have to kind of wait around and see um, to make sure that it's exported correctly, but once this is finished, then you will have a bigger file where all of your video components are just in one so that you don't have to either pay money to record longer or um, so that you don't have to upload your video in segments because I feel like you'll, you'll lose a lot of people after that first 15 minute segment. I think that covers everything and how to splice a video together, but if you have questions, let me know. Um, I think the I'm going to now move on and talk about YouTube. So now that you've got your video and you're ready to upload it to YouTube, um, this is the process and I'll probably show you some other cool youtube -y type stuff too. Um, the first thing that you want to do is go to, like you want to make sure you're logged into YouTube and you can, once you're logged into your account, I think that you can do this from any page on YouTube. Um, I have a quick link to where I find my YouTube videos, so I, I'll usually just click that and then um, go ahead and upload, but this is the, this is my YouTube channel page. Um, so whatever, wherever you are, you just want to find the button that looks like a plus housed inside of um, a video camera. And once you select that, you can upload your video. Going live is sort of that, um, I guess, like, conference, video conference opportunity, or um, if you, you know, have something to say and you think everyone is logged in to watch you right away, then you could do that. But I've never done that. I don't have any plans to. In the near future, I would just click upload video. Um, and then I want to first decide how I want my video to be shown. Public means anybody can search for it. And if I give someone a link to it or I embed it somewhere, they won't have any issues finding it. Unlisted means that you have to specifically have the URL in order to find it. Private means only someone you invite to the video can access it and they would have to log in to their YouTube account associated with a particular email. Um, and then scheduled is just you upload it now to be pushed out later. Um, I, for the most part with lectures, just leave it in as public and then I can click um, this little arrow, it'll go in red. Um, and find where I save my video. Um, once I open it up, it's going to take me to a new screen, and now the video is uploading. As you can see here, this is the progress bar. Um, first, it, it's really quick here on campus. It's very long at my house, um, but once it gets to about 95% is when it starts to slow down a little bit. I think the video that I uploaded is about five minutes, so um, the shorter the video, the fastest that it's going to upload to YouTube. It's not going to be accessible on YouTube until you click publish, so the first thing you want to do is just kind of make sure all of the settings are what you want them to be. Um, here is where you would change the title. So. I think tutorial one is a little vague. I might change it to something like um, how to make a video. And then you can provide a description. Some things that I like to do in the description, especially if I have a very long video, um, especially if I have a situation where I think a student might want to come back to just particular points of the video, for example, MLA or APA videos, then I can type in um, a timestamp. So let's say I want to tell my viewer that at 5 minutes and 23 seconds is where I begin to talk about MLA format. I can do that, enter down to a new line, and then maybe say at um, 19 minutes and 58 seconds is where I would begin talking about APA format. Um, once I click publish, then when the viewer is watching this video, they will be able to jump. They will just be able to click on 
the timestamp, it will be blue and it will be underlined so it becomes an effective um, hyperlink. And they can go straight to that source material so that if they need a very fast way to, to view the information, they can. Hesitations for that would be, well, what if they don't watch the whole thing and they just go to what they need? My argument would be, aren't they going to do that anyway? Um, might as well help them out a little bit. I don't know. Um, if you want to do anything else, and I usually don't, um, but if you want to do anything else, you can go to advanced settings and decide. Do you want to allow comments? I never disallow comments. I've never had an issue with comments because, let's face it, not very many people are watching my videos, um, but you can always turn them off, you know, um, if you don't want anyone to start bugging you on YouTube. Um, and you can decide what category you want to set your video to. I, I have all of mine set to education. You can just kind of go through. I don't, I think I looked at this the very first video I uploaded in detail, um, and, and then I, I never looked at it again. Um, one of the things you probably eventually want to do is, and it's not in here so never mind but one of the things you want to do is just confirm that your captions are correct for a student who um, may have, may need them I can show you how to do that some somewhere else um, the other thing that I do before I click publish is decide what thumbnail I want to pick now all of these look pretty much the same um, but Sometimes there are thumbnails of me, I don't know, going like this, or there's just a regular thumbnail where I'm, I look like more presentable than having my hands in the air or like maybe my drink or something like that. Um, so you can pick which one you want, or if you get real fancy, you can customize a thumbnail yourself and just upload a picture of, I, I don't know what you would want to do, but just look at YouTube. There's lots of examples. So you just pick whatever thumbnail you want, and then you can click publish, and YouTube is going to tell you, um, congratulations, here's how you can share this video with people. Then what you want to do is find, um, find where all of your videos are housed so if you go to my channel and I'm gonna try this out and see if it works and I'm not convinced that it will um, I think this is why I've always quick linked everything library I probably have to edit this out now um, anyway somehow you can get to your videos and I don't I don't know how I created this but eventually channel videos I don't know anyway um, you can find all of your videos on here and now you can see the one that I've just uploaded it tells you how long it is it tells you whatever the description is sometimes I don't add descriptions um, what type of video you have and you can change that if, if you want to um, the options on how to share it and then if there's any views um, and you can even kind of toggle like if you're obsessed with how many views you have you can look at that um, on here and see if people have commented or if they've liked your videos or whatever. Um, once you have a video in the um, little I don't know, video list here, you can click on the title and that is going to take you to some more settings options. You can always adjust the title of it. You can always adjust the description that you have. You can adjust all of the settings. You can still add a custom thumbnail. So if you make a setting while you're uploading the video that you decide you want to change or you feel like you have to change it, um, then you can do that as well. Um, there are even more advanced settings that you can adjust as well. If you are ever interested in finding out who's watching your video, when they're watching your video, for how long they're watching your video, and at what points they're watching your video, you can do that as well. So um, I will, let's see, I can show you with a different video um, that has more views. Maybe. Okay, so here is my most viewed video, and if I look at the analytics, I can see that um, from its initial publication, here's how it has increased in views. Um, here's my audience retention. So a lot of people are watching 
from the very beginning, um, they kind of, I lose viewers as it goes in, probably because people are searching for a video like this and they say, oh, this isn't what I want. Um, and then I have sort of these rises in how long I'm retaining people um, and maybe they increase toward the end too because people are skipping forward to find the relevant parts. And then of course they're like, oh, right around here, I don't need this information anymore, done. Um, and you can see kind of, you know, your your likes and dislikes. I think I have um, someone who didn't like this video, but they can go on somewhere. Um, there are other things that if I cared about being a YouTube influencer, I would look at, but I don't. And then I can go into the editor as well and play around here. I can add an end screen. So this is where if I wanted, once a student had finished watching the lecture on basic MLA format, I could link them to um, another of my videos or a video that um, YouTube has. So here, okay, what would make the most sense for me? Lecture on basic MLA format. Maybe then they need to um, go to English 112 MLA format lecture. That's going to be even longer. Um, maybe they also should go to in-text citations. I don't know. So once a student gets to this end screen as they're watching my video, it's going to prompt them to say, hey, if you want to watch something else that's related, here are some options for you. Um, and so if I saved that, then um, my uh, video would now have an end screen. And I can leave the um, editor if I want to. I can also go to transcriptions. I think that that is where I'm going to be able to show you uh, Oh, no, right Published automatic. Let's see what happens. Okay, yes. So transcriptions and then click on um, published automatic subtitles. This is where I can confirm and or edit. So if I wanted to edit the subtitles, um, this would be great for people like me who talk really fast. Or if you slur a little bit sometimes, also like me, then you can edit your subtitles. You just want to make sure ethically you're not editing out anything you say even if you don't like it. Um, I think that's important as well. So you can just go through and you know, maybe you can edit out the ums, I don't know. Um, but that's how you check to make sure that you have the ADA compliant for uh, YouTube subtitles. YouTube automatically puts these subtitles in here. I didn't do any of this, thankfully, because that would take a lot of work. Um, so it's already in here and you don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to keep those. Okay. I think that's pretty much everything that that I use with the studio. I mean, obviously there's a whole bunch of things that I just don't even pay attention to and I'm probably looking at more than any of you care to look at. But I want you to know that it's out there and it's something that can be interesting, I think. Um, I think especially the analytics. I think those could be really interesting. Um, okay, so email me if you have questions. Bye.